Hi and welcome back to part 6 of this uh, Blender tutorial series on rigging a motorbike. In part 5 we added a tilt function to our steering mechanics um, and in part 6 we're going to be looking at our shock absorber and rigging uh, this plus the spring. We're going to be doing this in much the same way as we did our suspension and handlebars where we're going to have a bone for our bottom shock absorber and a bone for our top shock absorber we're going to have targets and they're going to be tracking to each other the spring um, is going to be slightly different and we're going to there's a couple of different ways that we can do this and a couple of issues that you run that i see commonly uh, people running into um, when you rig springs um, to do with the deformations and squashing and stretching uh, but we'll come to that in a bit so let's start off with the bottom shock absorber. So let's put our cursor around the rotation point of our bottom shock absorber. Let's go into our rig and we're gonna make sure we're on our deformation collection. I'm just gonna hide the body for the moment so that I can see a bit more what I'm doing. I'm gonna add a new bone back into object mode and I'm gonna go to our top shock absorber. Cursor to selected. Selection to cursor. So we've now got a bone that is running right from the bottom all the way to the top pivot of the shock absorber. So this is going to be def shock absorber bottom. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to flip it around. So we've now got the same thing going in the opposite direction. And this is going to be our shock absorber top. The only other thing that we need for this part is two bones um, at the pivot points, which are going to be our targets. So let's just move this one down. And this one is going to be our, it's going to be a mechanical bone. Shock absorber. And this is going to be our bottom target. Even though it's at the top, it's going to be the target for the bottom bone. So I'm actually just going to copy that name. Control C to copy. We're going to put our cursor at the bottom, add another bone, paste the name in, and this is going to be our top target. For the parenting, we need to have a little think about this. So the top target, we want to parent that to the body because it is obviously connected to the main body and frame um, of our bike. So we're going to parent this to the deformation body. For the bottom, well that's connected to this back suspension. So let's parent it to the deformation suspension back. And the targets, um, we need to be careful with this that we don't run into um, those circular dependency issues that we mentioned earlier. So the, the bottom target, we're actually going to parent that to the top bone. So we're going to parent it to this bone. So when this bone moves, the top one move, uh, the top target move, moves. We can't, however, parent this one to the bottom because, as I said, that's then going to create. In fact, let's let's just do this to demonstrate what happens if you do it. So let's parent it to the shock absorber bottom. Um, let's set up our damp tracks. So in pose mode, we're going to track the bottom target uh, to our bike rig. And it's going to be the bottom bone is going to be looking at the bottom target. And the top bone, damp track, is going to be looking at the bottom target. And now, see, this all starts... Just by selecting stuff, we get a lot of glitching and some crazy stuff going on. Um, put on my controls, and you'll see this all starts going a bit mental. So I've control z that a bunch of times and deleted all the parents and bone constraints off of these bones uh, to get myself out of that dependency cycle that we were just in. Um, let's actually just parent our... Um, pieces to the bones before we we move on so let's take our shock absorber bottom and parent it to the bottom bone 
let's take the top and parent it to the top um, and now what we're gonna I'm just gonna move these to our bike rig layer and just turn everything else off for the moment so let's set this back up so the bottom needs to be parented to the deformation suspension back the top needs to be parented to the body the bottom target can be parented to the shock absorber top it was this bone that was causing the issues so we're going to parent that to the suspension back as well now when we go into pose mode let's set up our damp tracks so damp track bike rig the bottom is going to point to the bottom target and the top one is going to point to the top target and now if I put my controls back on grab my suspension this is now working um, because what's happening is that yeah my body is moving that's moving the top shock absorber and the target the bottom one is being parented to the suspension as is this and then the these are pointing towards each other so we've now got our uh, shock absorber deforming correctly um, without any of those dependency cycle issues. Um, let's now set up the spring. Uh, let's clear the locations of those. And let's set up the spring. So for the spring, we want to have a bone. Um, and let's just actually hide my armature for the moment. We want to have another bone that is running the full length of the spring going from uh, here all the way up to here on our spring um, so again we could just eyeball this but let's let's make it exact so if we select our shock absorber bottom and let's place our cursor on this loop uh, right at the the edge of, of uh, the spring there. Let's go back to our bike rig and we're going to add another bone and then for this one it's going right up to this loop. Gets a bit hard to see but yeah this loop of our top shock absorber. Selection the cursor. So now we've got this bone in the middle starting to get a little bit cluttered but hopefully you can see what's going on. This is going to be our deformation spring. I'm going to just extrude this bone out. And this is going to be our mechanical shock absorber spring target. The spring is going to be parented to the bottom um, shock absorber. And the target is going to be parented to the top shock absorber. What have we done there? Oh, because it was connected, that's why. Because I extruded it out. Let's disconnect that. Shock absorber top. In pose mode, we can set up the exact same thing where we're going to take our spring and we're going to damp track to our spring target so now we've got our spring target in fact you know we don't want to damp track it my apologies we want to stretch to that target uh, spring target maintain volume none let's add our controls back on and you can see what this is doing so as I pull my suspension, that try and keep an eye on this uh, middle bone here, the deformation spring. It's squashing and stretching uh, in between our shock absorbers. Now, what we could do is we could simply take our spring and parent it to the deformation spring. This, however, is going to cause a few issues. Namely, 
that if I get my suspension controls again, keep an eye on the spring. The, it's actually completely deforming. It's squashing and stretching. Um, and it's that same issue that we had with the suspension earlier when we um, were moving our ground control because of that stretching. Um, but we, we can't solve this by just changing the inherent scale because it's, it's not parented to anything. And we want that bone to stretch between them. Um, the way that we're going to solve this, I mean, you could just leave this as is. It depends on how, you know, visible, I guess, your, your spring is um, on your shock absorber. Perhaps on the, the motorbike model that you're uh, rigging, um, if you're not using this exact model, um, you might not even really be able to see the shock absorber spring. And you might just want to leave it as is. Um, but instead, what we're going to do is we're going to convert this to a curve. So let's go to our shock absorber spring model. And I'm actually just going to duplicate it uh, just so I've got a backup. And I'm just going to rename this as backup. And I'm going to hide it. So in our model, what we want to do is I'm actually just going to Alt-P and clear the parent as well so it's not parented anymore. Um, if we look at this model, we it's, you know, a um, spiral and it's then got these kind of like flat edges at the end. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to delete uh, these, these faces. And I'm also going to actually just go into edge mode and uh, shift alt select these two loops and press control X to uh, dissolve them and get rid of them. Do the same thing on the bottom part as well. So delete the faces, select these little holding edges and delete them. I'm now going to select one of the, like just the end loop. And if I go to select, select loops, edge rings, it's going to select all of these rings. Um, we're going to go right click and go to loop tools. And if you don't see this, um, it is an add on that you do need to uh, enable. It does come installed with Blender by default, uh, but it, it is by default turned off. So you need to make sure that you have this turned on. Um, if you do any sort of modeling uh, work, I would highly recommend having loop tools enabled. It's one of my default add-ons uh, that I always use. And we're just going to choose circle. And that's just going to turn all of these into a perfect circle. With all of these edge rings still selected, we're going to scale by individual origins. And we're just going to scale to zero. Enter. And what that's done is it's scaled all of them down to the centers. But if I turn the our backup back on, it's got now a perfect ring of edges or, um, all the way through the center of our spring, which is exactly what we want. So M, we can merge by distance to get rid of all of those extra vertices that have been scaled on top of each other. And now we can do F3 to search and we can convert to a curve. We're going to go back into edit mode and we're just going to set the spline type to Bezier and the handle type to automatic just to give us a little bit more um, roundness over our curve. And under the geometry drop down of our curve, we can just increase the depth. So that's going to give us a nice spiral. Uh, we can maybe turn on our backup just so that we can see. Uh, in fact, let's select this and our backup so we can see the original underlying mesh and we can just dial this into the correct value. I think 0 0.007 will work well. Uh, let's hide that again. Now this is obviously incredibly dense, so let's just turn the preview resolution way down to maybe two. Uh, shade smooth. And we can also uh, fill the caps. Now we've got a shock absorber spring that is in the same position as our previous one, which I can now just delete. Um, there is a curve instead. 
Now, you might be tempted to do the exact same thing that we did earlier of just parenting the curve to the deformation bone of the spring, but that's going to cause the exact same issues. We're still going to have that squash and stretch. Um, to get rid of this, we're going to use hooks instead. So if we go to our um, rig, turn on our deformation uh, collection, and the way that we're going to do this is you go to edit mode, select the deformation bone, go back into object mode, shift select our curve, go into edit mode again. We're now in edit mode with our curves, um, but we've still got the rig selected as well. And with all of these, um, with everything selected, we just press Control H to add a hook, and we're gonna hook to the selected bone. Uh, this does add a modifier, so a hook, and you can see the, the bone that it's added there. You could also just do this manually by just adding a modifier and then assigning all of the, um, the control points to it. So now, if we turn off our deformations, add our control rig back on, and grab our suspension, now when we move this, everything is working exactly as we want it and that spring is now no longer um, stretching and squashing and that is how you rig a shock absorber um, that's pretty much it for this part um, in the next part which is going to be the final one for our um, our kind of modeling well rigging our main parts of the bike we're going to be looking at the brake lines um which we're going to be doing a very similar process to what we just did for the spring so yeah thank you for watching and join me in part seven thanks